Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 131. It's on the ideal gas law, which is sometimes expressed as PV, pressure volume, equals NRT, which is the number of moles, times the gas constant, times the temperature. And now the temperature is measured in Kelvin. And so at zero Kelvin, the molecules aren't moving. How cold is that? That would be around negative 273 degrees Celsius. Have we achieved that in the universe? Well, close. In the Boomerang Nebula, it's around one or two Kelvin. And in laboratories, we've gotten within fractions of fractions of degree Kelvin by bombarding the matter with uh, lasers on all sides to stop molecular motion. It starts to form a new state of matter. But with a gas, we have these molecules that are bouncing around, and there are a number of macroscopic characteristics that we can measure in the laboratory. So we've got the pressure, the pressure exerted by the molecules on the container. We'll use P to represent that. We've got volume. That's going to be the area in which the, the gas is contained. Contained. We've got the amount, and we'll measure that in N, which is going to be the moles of the material. And then finally, we've got temperature. Temperature is going to be in Kelvin. And so we can think of this like a scale. And so you can think of it as people sitting on a teeter-totter. And so what would happen if we increase the pressure? Well, to keep it balanced, we'd have to decrease the volume. What happens if we increase the pressure? If we're changing the temperature, then we'd have to increase the temperature. Now, it doesn't work exactly like this. We have a, a constant called the gas constant that makes it all equal. And, and in chemistry, you'd have to do a lot of calculations for this. But in physics, you just have to know qualitatively what's going on. And so if we start with a balloon, and you could measure this in the laboratory, you could actually measure absolute zero. So what you do is take the balloon, and you measure the volume of the balloon. So you could wrap a string around it and measure its circumference, and therefore its volume. And you could plot that at a very cold temperature, maybe in a freezer. You could then move to an, a warmer area, a warmer area, and then you could move to a colder area. And so you can gather a bunch of different temperatures and then the volume of the balloon. And when it's colder, it's going to be smaller. When it's warmer, it's going to start to expand. And what you can do is you can extrapolate th from that. So if you play it backwards, what would its temperature be when the volume is zero? It's going to be absolute zero, around negative 273. And so we're going to use a PHET simulation to do this. R is the gas constant, but what's neat about the simulation is you could measure the volume. That's how big the container is. The temperature, we've got a thermometer. We've got a pressure gauge on the side. And then finally, we have N, which is going to be the number of molecules that we're adding. And so here's the relationship, PV equals NRT. And so let's look at pressure and volume and the relationship between those two. So what happens as we increase pressure, if we're keeping the other ones constant, Think of that teeter-totter again. If you increase the pressure, we'd have to decrease the volume. And this was studied by scientists. It's known as Boyle's Law. But let's use a PHET simulation to measure it. So what we're going to do is try to keep the temperature constant. And we're going to look at the pressure. And then the volume is going to be how big this container is. So what I did is I decreased the volume. Now what happened, the temperature went up right away, but we're using ice to cool that back down to where it was. And so what happened is as I decreased that volume, what happened to the pressure gauge, now the temperature's back to where it was, you see we saw a great increase in that pressure. Now I'm going to increase the volume, watch what happens to the pressure as I increase that volume, we're going to see a decrease in that pressure. And so there's a relationship between the pressure and the volume. If we were to, keeping the temperature exactly the same, if we were to graph it, it would look like this. And so what we have is if we increase the volume, so I'm going in this direction, what happened to our pressure? Our pressure decreases. What happens as we decrease the volume, what happens to our pressure? Our pressure is going to increase. Now, why do we have a number of different lines here? Each of these are going to represent different temperatures of the gas, as long as we keep those temperatures constant. Now, let's look at the relationship between the volume and temperature. So if we keep all the other ones the same, so what's going to happen? Well, imagine they're on either sides of the teeter-totter. If I keep the pressure and the, and the number of molecules the same, as I heat it up, as I increase the temperature, we're going to increase the volume to keep it balanced. And so why is that? Increasing the temperature increases the average kinetic energy of the molecules. There's moving around faster. If we keep the pressure the same, so that change in momentum as they collide with the container, 
As we increase temperature, volume goes up. As we decrease temperature, watch what's happening, the volume is going down. Now this is a direct relationship. So if we were to graph this, that's that absolute value calculation I showed you just a second ago. As we increase temperature, bigger volume. Decrease temperature, lower volume. If we play this out and extrapolate it, absolute zero. And so did you learn to extrapolate from a volume versus temperature graph to figure out absolute zero? Do you understand how you could design an experiment to play around with these using the PHET simulation? Remember, you want to keep some of them constant and then just change one at a time. And then finally, could you analyze the relationship between pressure and volume? So we're going to get these curves, each of those represents a different temperature, and I hope that was helpful.